Hi, I'm Ayal. Uh, I'm very lucky because I have the logo of the, tish of the project here. It's called Almonit. Uh, we started the project like about seven months ago. It's about decentralized websites. About eight months ago, sorry. Um, we actually call this centralized website the websites because in the first talk that I gave, I said this centralized website like 50 times and I broke my tongue, so the websites is much easier to say. And normally right now I would show you what I mean by the websites, and I would show you the decentralized uh, search engine for decentralized websites which we created, but since the connection does not work, <laughs> this is not going to happen. Yes. Okay, so the websites are basically uh, kind of an alternative to the regular websites. Uh, we did not invent the uh, websites, so ZeroNet at least was from 2015, and I'm not sure if there was something before. We also didn't uh, invent the method that we are using, which is connecting uh, Ethereum, like a decentralized name system, and uh, IPFS. Uh, what we do do is uh, tools for the websites, which basically means kind of a search engine for search, and we index all the D websites that people create, and we have a, a browser extension for you to access the websites because otherwise from the regular browser it doesn't work unless you use Opera for mobile where it actually works natively or status browser and stuff like it. And we also plan to have kind of uh, building tools for the websites. When I... Okay, let's begin with the project, Almonit. Almonit maybe sounds a bit strange, the name. It means uh, anonymous in Hebrew. So I'm from Israel, I'm living in Berlin, and the reason that we have this lion here, I'm really lucky to have the t-shirt. Uh, by the way, we have uh, five extra t-shirts to sell for 20 euros if anybody wants, uh, because the minimum amount to make was 10, and we, we are only five people. <laughs> so we got here really five t-shirts. We, we will be happy to sell them, and maybe we'll be able to pay for ourselves for a beer, uh, which is already something for this project. Yeah, so if, uh, in Israel there is Almonit Eli, Anonymous Eli, and if you go in the Eli, uh, there is a statue of a golden lion in the end, which is why we have the golden lion. And then the other reason why we have the golden lion is that Mozilla have a fox, and we like Mozilla. So then a fox and a lion is already like a jungle, and we, we, we want the internet to be like a jungle, so it's also like kind of a statement. Um, regular websites, basically, you know, like explain to me like I'm five years old, uh, old like all of you probably know, I'm simplifying here is you go to a DNS, you, you have a name, you go to a DNS, the DNS tells you in which server actually you can find the content of this name. Then you go to the server and the server gives you the website and there, there is all kind of interaction with the server to create dynamics things. Uh, in a D website, we do almost the exact same thing. You have a name, but you don't go to a server, you go to a decentralized name service, which all the ones that I know are existing on blockchain. So you have Namecoin, and you have uh, ENS, and you have stoppable domains, and you have actually quite a few others right now which are up and coming. Uh, we use ENS uh, because at the moment I think it's the most developed one, but basically the concept does not depend on it. So we go to ENS, and then we get where is the decentralized website existing. And what we get is kind of a identifier in a decentralized, in a, uh, decentralized storage, so in a file sharing system. We use IPFS. And from there we have a browser extension that does a very simple thing. You enter the, the name in the URL bar, you get, you go to ENS, you get where is the website, you go to IPFS, you get the website, and because of IPFS special structure you can also create some kind of uh, interactive experience between you and the website, which is already nice. When you do that, you have like three regular advantages of uh, decentralization. So it's super robust. Even in this native form, there are only a few hundred websites agreeing nowadays, but to DDoS them would be to DDoS IPFS and Ethereum blockchain, and, and this is super difficult. So it's really robust. It's also private, at least in a different way, the regular websites. So it is as private as Ethereum and IPFS are, and we can argue how much private is it. Uh, it's a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, network, but certainly it's a different kind of privacy. And it's also censorship, resi censorship resistance for the same reason that it's robust. It's very difficult to censor peer-to-peer -peer networks. And the last thing that I really like about it, this is my personal favorite thing, is that you can do kind of a collective websites. So you can do a website which is being created 
and maintained and controlled by a group of people all over the world, and uh, maintenance, control, is, control, and creation is being done kind of automatically, uh, which means it's really belong to a group of people. There is no one person who does that. This is kind of an experiment that I actually came up with. So the only collective website existing, existing so far is a demo that I made and I will probably publish in the last two weeks. But it's a use case that really excites me because I've been doing open source projects with people all over the world. And they were, some of them were about blockchain. And sometimes like who operates the website really became a difficult, uh, risky or sensitive issue. And here we can do it like as a group. So it's something that I really like. Then the Almonis project, as I said, basically does Right now, three things there. The first one is the decentralized search engine, which we are really proud of. It was a lot of work to do. Uh, we have here the lead developer who did a fantastic job. Hi, Muhammad. He's a bit disappointed because I don't have the presentation, but <laughs> <laughs> I hope I improvise well. Um, it's right now runs client side, which means, of course, it's super private because it's all pri uh, client side. Uh, you can do it because there are like only a few hundred websites. You can also do it with maybe a few thousand websites. And the plan to scale it in the future is, I don't know how many, I mean, if people know, here know how, how IPFS work, but basically you can treat IPFS as one big file system. And then uh, we can just like divide the index of the search engine to many, many parts. And when you will query, you will only query some of them. So you will not have to get all of it. We have, like, for the search engine, like, three parts. One of them is a web crawler, which I wrote. It uh, just crawls the Ethereum blockchain all the time for new websites and updates of websites and update the, 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 the list of websites. Then we have a scraper, which is written in Python, and we have a uh, beautiful H. I forgot the name of the package. Beautiful soup, thank you, which take text from... Uh, from the web, like, take the website, give you text, and we have, like, uh, another package to do the... The actually scrapping itself and all the semantic stuff. And we have the website itself, which is a progressive web app. Uh, it really works fantastically in the way that it looks like a search engine, like a proper one. And, and we are really proud of it. So if you watch this talk and you're curious, uh, check on Monit. Um, to really access the Decentralized website, you need some kind of browser extension. So either our browser extension, for which exists for Mozilla and Chromium, or MetaMask, there is also gateways to, to the centralized website. So if you type almonit.eth.link, you get it. And then to finish the talk, because my time is up, uh, follow us on Twitter. We need followers. We, what we really need is people who build the website, and especially people who experiment with this concept, because I think you can do lots of interesting stuff. Thank you very much.